Hello. I hope that the school year is off to a good start for you all. My name is Marcus Chen and I am the training specialist for the School Land Trust Program at the Utah State Board of Education. Today, I'll be going over a few program changes and requirements in regards to the School Land Trust Program. Today's presentation will include information on election procedures, fall program requirements, information regarding council membership, and important October deadlines for charter schools. Since this presentation will have a good amount of information, we have generated this QR code for you to save a copy of this presentation to use as a reference as you begin working with your trust line councils. You may also use this QR code to send our team an email with any questions or for any additional support that your councils may need. Let's start with some new program changes. Charter schools will need to be aware of some new program changes that are occurring in 2024-2025. These changes include, first, business administrators will need to verify carryover amounts for the school land trust budget and approve upcoming plans, current plan amendments, and final reports. Second, 2024-25 also brings a few clarifications in regards to trust land council election procedures. Council elections are required only if the number of people applying for council seats is greater than the number of available seats. This applies to councils that are established separately from their governing boards. Continuing with council election requirements, it is important to note that election procedures should be created by the school's governing board and must be in place before an election occurs. It is important that your council elections incorporate the following requirements. First, you must state the number of parent or grandparent members to be elected during the election. You must also state the number of other member seats available for the election, along with a definition for other members that are serving on your council. Along with council member info, you must also state the length of term for each position as well as provide notice about the time frame for the election in your election announcement. Program guidelines also require a process for notifying the school community and information on how the election was conducted. Lastly, you must also state the process for filling unfilled seats if there are seats available after the election has concluded or if a member resigns. The following list consists of additional recommendations for council elections. First, when developing your elections and council seating, you will need to consider what you will do if a grandparent or grandparent member is also a school employee and provide clarification on how you determine their role. Second, you will also need to provide clarification on how ballots are cast. It is important that your election procedures are in line with the existing regulations that your governing board has in place. Other clarifications include a process for handling a tie vote, an election process for a council chair and vice chair, and how you may form subcommittees. As you form your councils and reach out to school committee members, it is important to remember that these councils are formed to address the unique needs of the charter school. Beyond election procedures, there are also a few more changes for the 2024-2025 school year regarding due dates, council signature forms, and unallowable expenses. First, distribution calculations are finalized on March 1st. Any undistributed amounts will be added to the total distribution amount for charter schools for the following year. Another important date for charter schools this year will be May 1st when upcoming plans are due. In regards to council signature forms, governing boards serving as charter trust land councils are exempt from completing the council signature form. The final change for the 2024-2025 school year is that any purchases related to the storage of personal student property are considered as unallowable expenses. If you have any further questions on these changes, please feel free to contact the school land trust team. If elections were not held in the spring of last year, your schools should be conducting council elections for open spots in the fall. Once councils are set up, three major items must be submitted by October 20th. These items include the council membership form, principal's assurance, and all required website postings. 
If you save a copy of this presentation, you can access the web website requirements by clicking on the required website postings link here. These website posts only apply to elected trust land councils. During the fall, as councils are beginning to form, we have received many questions about council seating. It is important to remember that as you form your councils, that every school is required to have a council with a two parent or grandparent majority. Also, governing boards may serve as the school council if they meet the two parent majority rule. If they do not meet the requirement, the governing board is responsible for establishing an election process for the council. The charter trust land councils may include community members, business partners, school staff, or administration. If you have any further questions in regards to council seating, please feel free to contact us to go over your council seating procedures. Before we sign off, we wanted to leave you with a few reminders for upcoming program dates that are approaching in October. For governing boards serving as charter trust land councils, you will need to review your school's current trust land plan, the implementation of the prior year's plan, and your TSSP plan. You will also need to enter the council membership form and principal's assurance forms to the school land trust website by October 20th. Elected trust land councils will also need to review your school's current school land trust plan, the implementation of your prior year's plan, and the TSSP plan. In addition to those reviews, there are three major items due on October 20th. First, governing boards must provide training for charter trust land councils by October 20th. You may contact us for more training in person or use materials that are available at our website. Similar to governing boards acting as charter trust land councils, they also need to enter the council membership form and principal's assurance forms to the school land trust website on October 20th. Finally, the elected trust land councils need to update their school website with the necessary program requirements by October 20th. If you save a copy of this presentation, you may click on the link here to access the a list of required website postings. Prior directors and administrators should work with their councils to make sure that council membership forms, principal assurance, and website requirements are all submitted to the school land trust site by October 20th. To support your work during the fall, we have these three timelines available. You may save these copies for your own records and refer to them throughout the year. You may also save a copy of this presentation from this QR code for your own reference to help support your council work. If you have any additional questions, please feel free to contact us at, the off at our office phone or email. Have a great day.